Over the years, I've built up quite the grain collection, but I'm not going to be using any of it in today's beer. In fact, today's beer is both going to be very fast to brew, but also test the very limits of my patience. Let's brew a lambic. My name is Martin Keane, taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks, and yes, still sporting a bit of a uh, bit of a black eye. Now, every beer that I've brewed so far on my homebrew challenge has had one thing in common, and that is that it has been an all grain beer. But today I am brewing an extract. Why? Well, when I started to look around at what other people are doing with their lambic recipes, it basically comes down to a pretty simple beer. It's just some Pilsner malt and some wheat malt. And a lot of places were saying, well, you know what? You might as well just do this as an extract. And I have been itching to revisit extract brewing. That's how I started out. Now, there are different types of lambic. There's fruit lambic, perhaps the best known style, at least here in the US. There's blended lambic, but I'm going to brew a regular old dry lambic. Now, this style of lambic is quite light bodied. It's sour, it's dry, and it's pretty funky. And to get that level of funk, well, you need to condition this beer for eh, about a year. Yeah, that's right about a year. Now in terms of recipe, well, this is going to have a gravity of around 10.52. It's going to be about a 5% beer. As for the extract ingredients, well, that needs just a little bit of explaining. Now when putting this together, Alambic is typically 30 to 40% wheat and the rest is Pilsner malt or, or barley. So I was thinking initially that I would just do 30% of wheat liquid malt extract and 70% of Pilsner malt extract, but that isn't going to get me what I want. And that's because the wheat liquid malt extract isn't just wheat. So I looked this up and it turns out that 65% of the ingredients are actually malted wheat and the rest is malted barley. So what I'm actually using in my recipe is four pounds of Bavarian wheat liquid malt extract and three pounds of Pilsner liquid malt extract in my five gallon batch. Here is my liquid malt extract and while I'm heating up the water, I've got about six gallons of water here that I'm warming up. Let's talk about what extract brewing is and specifically the stuff that I don't have to do today. So first of all, I didn't add any water salts. Normally I would add some gypsum, calcium chloride and Epsom salt. I'm not doing any of that because I don't have a mash. Uh, and that is the second thing. There is no mash, so there's no grains here. I don't have to worry about any of that. This is effectively all pre-mashed for me. Now, extract brewing doesn't mean you can't use specialty grains. And in fact, most of my recipes that are available at Atlantic Brew Supply do have an extract version, and most of those do use some specialty grains in them as well, and you steep those. So you steep them in warm water uh, ahead of adding in the malt extract. Now, a lot of people do start out with extract brewing and eventually move on to all grain, but I don't think that means in any way that extract brewing is like inherently bad or inferior to all grain brewing. In fact, I did a, a video with some buddies where the three of us got together and we all brewed the same beer. We're doing a brewer's best, what is it? Scottish ale. And one of us did it using an extract recipe and it turned out that the extract version was like the most complex of all three of the beers we brewed. For a 3% beer, it's actually pretty good, isn't it? Doesn't taste light to me. No. no. Now I've got the water nice and hot, not quite at boiling, but the first thing I'm going to do before adding in this liquid and malt extract is turn off the heat. 
because I don't want any scorching when I add this liquid malt extract in. Okay. Oh. <laughs> this smells just like yeast starters. This is uh, typically what I make my yeast starters from. Okay, uh, now I'm just going to slowly add this in. I think this stuff is the stickiest liquid known to man. Okay, I've got about three quarters of it in and I'm gonna give this a stir. All right, I think I've got that in there. Now I'm going to bring this to a boil. And while this is heating up, let's take a moment to talk about the hops because I'm about to add those in. Um, this beer should have no hop bitterness at all. And in fact, you can get special types of hops, de-bittered hops, that you can add in to a Lambic to make sure that you get a little bit of hop character without any of the hop bitterness. Um, I don't have de-bittered hops, so I've gone about making my own in this, uh, this paper bag here. So to create your own de-bittered hops, you want to start with a low alpha acid. I've gone for SARS hops and you want to treat your hops very badly. Now, normally the way that I handle hops is I buy a big bag, I use some in a brew, and then I use my vacuum sealer to make sure that everything is sealed up tight to get the oxygen out, and then I store the hops in the freezer, and all of that helps keep the hops fresh. But what I've done now is deliberately oxidized my hops. So a month ago, I took a pound of SARS hops, I put them in this paper bag, and I've just left them out at room temperature for a month. That should have done a good job of debittering them. Reached a vigorous boil now, so let's add in these hops. Then we're gonna maintain the boil for 30 minutes. With five minutes to go, I do have one more ingredient to add in. This is maltodextrin, which is non-fermentable sugar, so this is not gonna be consumed by the yeast. Uh, adding this will just add a little bit more body and an improved mouthfeel to the beer. I'm adding in half a pound. And the sky will up into I've got the wort cooled and added into my fermenter. It's now at 68 Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius. Time to add the yeast. This is Y yeast 1007 German ale. So, so far so normal. I'm gonna let this ferment for a week, then move on to the souring. Beer has been fermenting for one week. It's down to 10.19. It's time to add the bugs. I am using this from the Wild and Sour series from Yeast. This is Yeast 55.26, and it's really going to give sort of a, a pie cherry sourness to this beer. And that's it. Um, as, I, as I said with the previous sour beer that I did, if you do have a glass, fermentation vessel, uh, that's probably going to be better, but I'm using a better bottle which is supposed to have low oxygen permeability. Um, and I am going to be aging this guy for a year, so I'm going to put this in my little basement room along with my Flanders Red. Let it do its thing. Well, we uh we came prepared. Yeah, it looks like we uh, used the same closet today when we got dressed, apparently. <laughs> so today's Lambic is not the Lambic that I brewed and is still maturing. Um, 
I've got some Lidemans. Lindemans? 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 Yeah. Lindemans? Lindemans? Yeah. Lin I don't know. Now, this is a fruit lambic. I wasn't able to find a non fruit lambic, but it's close enough. I think we're uh, willing to give it a try. For sure. Uh, before we get to that, just a quick shout out to my nephew Jackson down in Australia. Jackson has his own YouTube channel, Whiplash Productions. He has how to's, animations, all sorts of cool stuff. Jackson is also the architect of my favorite photo bomb. Yeah, go ahead and uh, go check that out. Subscribe, give him a couple of likes. It's pretty awesome. All right, so let's get into this. Now we do have a branded glass in here. Ooh, fancy. Can I have the branded glass? Sure, I'll have the, uh, the non-branded one. Okay, well, it's a nice little box. <gasps> Ooh, pretty. Right, now this came with multiple flavors. So there's raspberry, uh, strawberry, and peach. And peach. What do you think? Um, I think we should start with mm, peach. Don't get much. Those are teeny little bottles, aren't they? So the bottle says this is a wild yeast fermentation. Exceptional complexity. Oh. Very peachy. Peachy. Mm -hmm. All I smell is peach. Very oh. peachy. I think this one might be a bit too sweet for It's me. very sweet. It's very sweet. Um, not getting much sour at all. Not at all. There's just like a little subtle sourness, but it tastes more peachy than sour. Yeah. All right, strawberry. I'm interested to see if it's going to be the same color. Yeah, that one was like super yellow. I assume this is going to be pinky. Yeah. You would assume, right? I think the raspberry one will be, oh. Yeah, it is a different color. Oh. That was dark at the end. I feel like I should have swirled a little bit, maybe. Is yours like kind of really cloudy? Yes, it's cloudy. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little swirl. It smells like a subtle strawberry. Yeah, like a light strawberry smell. I think the peach was quite a strong yeah. smell, but this is a little subtler. Yeah. It smells nice. And I think this time there's a bit more sourness in there. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like that. That's got, um, for me, there's a taste of strawberry, but oh. then there's something else going on in there. I don't know if I want to go back for a second sip. I don't like this one at all. No, it's still the same. <laughs> <sighs> okay, one was good. One was uh, definitely not good. Let's see what we think of. Okay. Oh, a little bit better. That's a dark, dark. Oh, that looks, that looks <coughs> inviting. A little bit promising. Yeah. Okay, well, it does look a nice raspberry color. Deep yeah. color. Yeah, oh, that's a... Uh, to me, that's a real fresh raspberry taste. It's really good. Um, again, no sourness. So the strawberry, I picked up the sourness. This one is, do you, do you think it's tart? Yeah. Yeah? Raspberries are tart in general. I think raspberries, are, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm not getting any sort of berry notes from it. It's just, I mean. I'm, oh yeah, we're meant to be saying about beer and yeah, stuff, aren't we? <laughs> would you think this is a beer? No, I, like I said, I think we're, it feels like I'm just drinking a cider. Yeah, it doesn't taste taste beery whatsoever. I, I could not tell you if there's like hop, hoppy or wheaty or bready or nutsy. <laughs> no, just, it's none of those it's things. none of those things. It's, it's raspberry. And raspberry. That's it. I was pleasantly surprised with two out of the three of them. I thought they were really good. I thought the one I disliked the most, I was going to like the most, but a bit shocked on that. But yeah, I enjoy trying these fruity lambics. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, mark your calendar a year from now. We'll, uh, okay. we'll try my one as well. Okay. But until then, uh, with your empty glass. Cheers. cheers.